Hi, my name's Roy Dunn. I'm a professional photographer and I'm here at Cognosys to walk through the operation of the Stop Shot Drip Kit in terms of how we run it to get the droplet collision images that you see behind me. We walked through earlier uh, in the earlier video the, the setup and connection of the system and now we're going to see it in operation. And really, it's very simple. Watch. I click a button, you'll hear the double click two drops being released. The first drop impacts in the water and bounces, creates a column. The second drop impacts that and produces the umbrella. And right at that instant that the umbrella, as a result of the collision occurs, the flash goes off. Very, very simple. Okay, now that we've got everything set up, I'd like to talk about a few of the aspects of, of the operation and a few of the pieces of equipment. We mentioned during setup that we have a Marriott siphon. This is a really powerful feature of the stop shot water drop kit because what it means is that regardless of the level of volume of liquid that we have in the reservoir the pressure on the valve is the same so the water droplets that are emitted by the valve are the same volume so they're they're very repeatable that's very important when we're trying to create collisions and, and get some level of predictability about our photography that Marriott siphon is, is created by the insertion of this tube that you can probably see here. The water level, we have clear water in here. What many photographers do is not use just clear water but might add some food colouring. But then you can also change the dynamics of your images by changing the viscosity of the, droppings, the dropping fluid or the substrate fluid. You can add detergent, you add Gua gum, anything. You can use milk, oil. You can play all sorts of games to get very, very different effects with your droplet photography. And once more, just to show the repeatability, a couple of drops, they fall through. And what's happening is, as I mentioned in the setup, the two droplets fall through the mini infrared sensor here that kick off the timing. So the timing is when these droplets pass this point to here, we're actually at about 280 milliseconds, about a quarter of a second later, it, the stop shot system fires the flash. We've seen that it's very, very simple to drive the system in this particular configuration. Remember, as we we're setting up, we had the valve at 24 inches and the, uh, set, the mini sensor at 19 inches because we had actually loaded a preset provided by Cognosys into the stop shot itself. That preset configures the entire system to set up um, the up button to release the two droplets, and then the timing of the sensor input to create the timing to drive the flash. And we can actually go through that. Um, let me show you how we actually go through the loading of those presets. It's a very straightforward operation. Cognosys have provided us with a, a number of preset configurations to enable us to get up and running with droplet photography very quickly. In order to access those pre-configured situations or pre-configured menus, we need to go through the configuration screen, which we can reach simply by holding the config button down for a second or two. And we then are presented with the global configuration screen. As you can see, it's four lines. The pointer arrow at the moment is on the second line and we need to, in fact, load a new configuration. So if we select, we'll, take, we'll go down to that load, configure, load or save configuration and actually energize that line. Here we're presented, do we either load a configuration or save what we already have? Of course, we want to load one of the presets, so I'll click up and down. And here we have, we're presented with single drop option, but actually for the setup we have, we're going to be doing droplet collision. So if I hit up, we'll actually move to the drop on drop pre-configured situation where all the parameters are already entered for the situation we uh, have set up with the um, mini beam sensor at 19 inches, the head of the droplet nozzle at 24 inches. We select that and you'll see we're presented with the thing or with the system already waiting. If I click the up button now, it's going to energize trigger one. It's going to fire a couple of droplets and we're ready to go. Okay, we have the presets loaded. Everything is set up. I suppose we want to see what the actual image looks like when I'm actually releasing these droplets and, and firing the flash. So what we'll need to do is introduce a background because water is clear. It's kind of hard to see. It's hard to photograph because you see right through it. So we'll actually take some images with a camera using the open flash technique that we used before and, and 
we'll darken the entire environment, we'll take some shots and we'll see what we get. But you may be able to see on camera a little bit better what's happening with the water as we release it there. Okay, now we've seen the system operating perfectly as it does all the time. Of course it works perfectly all the time when we set it up correctly. What happens if we don't quite set it up correctly and things don't happen as we expected? A very, very common setup issue is the alignment of the mini sensor. As you can see, when I hit the button, the droplets fall, they go through the mini sensor, it triggers the stop shot to fire the flash. If we misalign the sensor such that the droplets miss the little infrared beam in that sensor, watch what happens. We get two droplets, but nothing happens with the flash. If we look at the LCD display, we'll see that trigger one is saying active. What happens is the system is waiting for the droplets to fall through that infrared beam sensor. So if we've set up and we hit the button, the droplets occur and we don't see anything, let's wipe our finger through there. If we get a flash, we know that our connections are correct. Everything is hooked up correctly. The only thing that we need to do is actually realign the sensor. So let's try and do that. And hopefully it'll get back into position pretty well. Nope. There we go. So now we're actually firing the flash again, we have good alignment. If, however, we found out that when we, let's go back and do it. If I misalign the uh, mini sensor, release the water drops, and I put my finger through there, but no flash occurs, then we know we have a connection issue somewhere between the um, mini sensor and the stop shot box, or the stop shot box and the flash, or we may have the output triggers, trigger one and trigger two swapped around. Check all of your connections because what, even if this is misaligned, if we click the release button and then put our finger through, we see the flash, we know then we only have misalignment. If we put our finger through the uh, mini sensor and don't see a flash, then we know have a connect, we have a connection problem. So I hope that clears it up. Um, two main um, modes of why my system isn't working perfectly right out of the bat, misalignment here or connection of the system. You've just seen how to hopefully I isolate either of those scenarios so we can get up and running quickly. So one last potential gotcha with the setup. It's kind of fundamental, but hey, I've done it more than once myself, is I fire the button, nothing happens, nothing happens here. Oops, I forgot to turn my flash on. It's also rather important to remember that your flash should be in a manual mode, probably dialed down in power so we get a fast enough flash duration to freeze the droplets, but check that your flash is in manual mode. If it's in anything like ETTL mode, even firing it from here may or may not produce a flash. So it's really important, one, to have your flash turned on, remember that, Roy, and secondly, to have it in manual mode so that you know when you're getting a signal from here, the flash is firing. The final thing to mention is to understand what the stop shot is telling us in its various modes of operation. And what I mean by that is we have the sensor misaligned at the moment. So when I hit the button, nothing happens. If I look, if I've done that and I look at the output or at, look at the LCD display here, it's saying trigger one is active. It's waiting for something to happen. It's waiting for the event for the droplets to fall through the mini sensor. So if you're looking at your uh, stop shot system while you're doing using the droplet kit in this scenario, if trigger one says waiting, it's waiting for a button push. It's waiting for you, the user. If we click that, it'll now go into the active mode because it's waiting for this sensor here to be triggered to fire the flash. And until that happens, it'll remain in active mode. Thanks for watching.